chapter 5, 9, and 7 came out today, and it was very, very interesting. I would have to say that. But before I get into the review, I actually read a comment that made me laugh. Somebody said that um, they're tripping on how uh, excited everyone's getting that uh, they made a crack in Toby's mask, and it's four of them fighting, but Conan pretty much destroyed the fuck out of it, and it was just her versus Toby. I thought that was funny as hell. The starts off with Kakashi explaining how the uh, technique that Toby uses works. First, he says that it's not really Toby being intangible. He's saying that he's sending certain parts of his body into that dimension, that different dimension, and that uh, that's what makes it appear that he's going intangible because that part of his body is technically not there. So, for an example, if I didn't want to get hit in my face, you know, like in my face, this part of my body would be in another dimension, but it would have the appearance that I'm still here, but it's in another dimension. Then Kakashi goes on to explain that when he sent the uh, kunai in the other dimension, it had no choice but to make contact with Toby because of the angle that they were taking, so it hit him in the face. You know, pretty simple, I guess. And then Kakashi makes the most startling revelation of the whole chapter. He goes on to explain that his um, eye, pretty much, and Toby's eye uses the same dimension. So when Toby goes intangible, it's sent into the same dimension that his Kamui uses to send other objects into another dimension. It's, it's the same dimension. And as soon as he said that, I'm pretty sure everybody was just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's Obito, it's Obito. Um, it's confirmed that it's his eye in the lease. Is it him? Who fucking knows? And then B asks a question that I'm pretty sure the uh, whole community was wondering. You know, he says to Kakashi, well, why are your and his eye technique created? And then again, I don't know why they do this in these mangas, but Toby's just pretty much standing there. Just letting them explain what the fuck going on. Letting them just pretty much talk about his weakness. He's just standing there. And then even Guy can, you know, see that it's a connection between those two guys. And he's like, Kakashi. He. And then Kakashi asked Toby a question that we're all dying to know. He's like, where did you get that out from? And then Toby's like, hmm, where did I get it? I got it during the last uh, Shinobi War. I got it at the uh, bridge. Yeah, the bridge where you, you know, when you first were called the hero with the Sharingan, that's when I got this eye. And as soon as he said that, I was like, wow. So that, you know, it, it confirms that it's at least Obito's eye. You know, first it was confirmed with the connection of the dimension between the two. Then that statement confirmed it was at least Obito's eye. Now, do I personally think that it's Obito? I don't kind of, I don't believe that at all. Can it be his body? Probably, you know what I'm saying? It could be just the eye, maybe his body. I don't know. Uh, like I said, it got to be somebody who, as soon as he would take off the thing of scaring his face, you know, it would have to be somewhere, as soon as we saw him, we'd be like, oh, oh. It would have to be somebody like that. Because other than, you know, if, if not, then that would be stupid, pretty much. If it was someone who we would have to look up to see, oh, okay, it's that guy who was standing next to that guy in that one panel shot 300 chapters ago. That'll be kind of stupid, right? Then Toby starts monologuing. I'm not going to read what he said. You know, I think that, you know, you should read it yourself to get that impact. But as I was reading it, I actually started to feel like, like, it's, it's almost like he really has a twisted type of past because I have, um, you know, little cousins who I look at, you know, I have a little cousin who I look at as a daughter, you know, and if anything was to happen to her, the person responsible for it, I would make them fucking suffer and pay to the fullest fucking extent of my life as well as theirs. I'm not even gonna lie about that. And the way Toby is reacting towards Kakashi, not just the ninja world, but his reaction towards Kakashi seems like it's like a bitter hatred for that particular character like he said something to him like um 
Like your actions, I mean your words without actions mean nothing to me. I told you not to open your mouth so easily. And it's like he seems to be particularly frustrated with Kakashi's character. And to me, you know, that seemed like it would only happen if, you know, one, someone in, you know, in your past or someone that you're close to was wronged, you know, by someone else. So if someone in Toby's past was wronged by Kakashi, he may still hold that grudge. Or, I hate to even bring this up, in the case of it being Obito, because Kakashi failed to protect Ren, who I'm assuming is dead because... When Kakashi was dying that time during the pain invasion arc, he was like, I'm going to be with Ren, Obito, and my dad and shit. So, I'm assuming Ren is dead. Because Kakashi failed to protect her, if Toby is Obito, he would have a reason, you know, to hate him. Because he's like, I died, you know, protecting both of you or whatever. I gave you my eye. I told you to protect her and you didn't. And then Toby made that same parallel with Naruto when he was talking to him. He was like, okay, what if the mission that Jiraiya left you and the mission that your dad left you, what if you failed? How would you fucking feel, right? You know, how would you feel if you failed, you know? And uh, Naruto pretty much didn't even give an answer. I mean, I would feel like shit, you know, if my grandfather and father left me something to do, you know, and uh, I just utterly, utterly failed it, you know, just completely failed in it and I would feel like shit you know and uh Toby pretty much showed that um I know everyone's like oh yeah Madara is the baddest motherfucker in this anime and I mean in this manga and Madara for the win and team Madara and fangasm and all that shit but Toby showed that his dynamic as an antagonist goes way beyond what Madara is cause Madara just seems like the standard antagonist Oh, I had a beef with a motherfucker in my past, and because I didn't get to sell that shit then, I'm gonna bring it to the present. And whoever gets involved and gets in my way, I'm stomping that ass. But Toby is kind of like, he seems like he saw the world from a good point of view, and then something happened, and now he's seeing it only in like the darkest and shittiest light, and he wants to get rid of that light by creating an illusion, you know, that the world is okay. And that shows that his his character is more dynamic than pretty much any other antagonist I've seen so far. Um, that's really all that happened in the chapter, you know what I'm saying? Towards the end, um, the uh, QB, Karama, he was like, uh, no, so let's switch, man, I want to talk to this guy. And then Karama's like, yeah, you're full of shit because, uh, he was talking to Toby, he was like, you're full of shit because uh, Naruto's dad told Naruto that he put, you know, me inside of him so that one day he will be able to control my power and look at us now. We actually are friends, you know. It, he's living proof, Naruto is living proof that all the change and all the promise that everyone's put inside of him, he can do. So Toby, you full of shit. And then Karama's just like, yeah, fuck it, charge Naruto. Let's, let's, let's do this shit for the win. And uh, that's how the chapter ends. I honestly have to say that uh, because um, they know Toby's weakness now, he really is gonna have to be on guard. I'm just speculating that he's pretty much just gonna, uh, you know, hide behind the um, the uh, ten tails and just, you know, use that as his shield. I do have a question though, with the Sharingan. I mean, with the uh, the Rasengan that Naruto did in the last chapter. I, this may just be me fucking up, but can't the Renegon dispel those attacks? So why didn't he just like vanish it? Right? That's what I thought. It could just dispel that attack. So why didn't he, like, vanish it with the Renegon? You know, I mean, on, unless it's just a Rocks and Shuriken that can get dispelled. Because when Naruto threw that at uh, Madara, he just got rid of it. So I was thinking, why didn't Toby use his Renegon to dispel the Rasengan? Unless he's using the... I, I don't know. I, I, that really kind of confused me. If you can answer that for me, please drop that in the comment section below. And uh, this is all for me, guys. And uh, if you could, give me a thumbs up. And uh, drop some comments on, you know, who you think Toby is and stuff. And I'll see you guys whenever the next chapter comes.